Welcome back! In this lesson we are going to learn about the Russian Roulette Rule. So just to avoid some misunderstandings, the Russian Roulette Rule that I'm going to talk about in this lesson is a rule that applies to the Monte Carlo Neutron Transport Simulations. And more specifically it relates to the Neutron Statistical Weight that we covered in the previous lesson. Typically, each neutron history starts with a neutron weight which is close to 1. However, as the simulation progresses over the successive collisions of the uh, neutron history, the statistical weight changes and typically it uh, decreases over each collision when uh, the sampling rules are applied. And that's because we apply such changes to the sampling rules which help us to improve the significance of the outcome of the particle or neutron history. So let me give you an example how the neutron weight may uh, uh, actually be sampled over the uh, collision. So let's say that we have number of collisions Uh, during a single neutron history and uh, on the vertical axis we have the weight. So we start with the weight 1 at the beginning of the neutron history. So this is the weight of the fission neutron and as we sample new collisions and apply the altered uh, rules for the neutron transport the weight becomes smaller and smaller so it goes like this now eventually the weight of the neutron becomes so small that it will lose its impact on the results because you remember that all the results they are uh, uh, multiplied by the statistical weight so the contributions uh, to the results from uh, each neutron history is weighted by the statistical weight. So when it drops a lot, then uh, the neutron will no longer have much of its impact to the results. So at some point we have to decide what to do with the neutron which basically doesn't have much impact on the results because to us its simulation still takes the same uh, computing cost you see the statistical weight is just a number but to us it takes as much of the computing cost to simulate uh, neutrons with a small neutron weight as, as those which have a very large neutron weight so we have to be smart and we have to put a limit uh, to the neutron weight, to the minimal uh, value of the neutron weight that we accept for uh, our simulation. We have to have some limit below which we simply will not accept the neutron histories anymore. So the limit depends on the application. It, uh, the, there are applications in which you may set these limits very, very large. And there are some other problems which require that you set this uh, limit very small. Uh, so I cannot give you a general recommendation at this point. In uh, the later uh, lessons I will suggest some numbers for uh, specific problems. Now. We have to decide now what to do with those neutrons that actually cross the limit. So you may suggest that we can simply stop the simulation of these neutron histories. However, there is a problem. If we simply stop the simulation of every uh, neutron history that uh, drops its weight below this limit, then we will start to uh, lose neutrons uh, artificially, right? This will actually represent some artificial 
uh, absorption in the system which is not really there. So if we terminate a neutron history we will have to compensate it by some way. So how can we compensate it? So a common solution to this problem is in killing only some of the neutron histories that uh, pass through this uh, weight limit and uh, this can be compensated by actually increasing the statistical weight of uh, the other neutron histories that we don't kill. So for instance we may kill every second neutron history that uh, pass through the limit but then we will compensate it by increasing the statistical weight to the every uh, other second neutron history. So in that way it will jump up uh, at this point and then it may go through some other collisions before it hits the limit again. So how can we decide about which neutron histories we can kill and uh, which we can uh, let to survive and uh, how much do we increase the statistical weight of those histories that will survive? The answer to this question is given by the Russian roulette rule which is used by all the Monte Carlo codes for the neutron transport simulation. The Russian roulette rule uses a random number generator which generates numbers between 0 and 1 and then it requires that you specify a value 1 over d. It's recommended that d comes from the interval 2 to 10. So the Russian roulette rule works like this. Every time the weight of the neutron history drops below the limit, a random number is generated between 0 and 1. So let's say that the number falls here. So if it does fall here above the 1 over d limit, as in this case, then the neutron history is terminated. It's over. If, however, the number falls below the 1 over d limit, then the neutron history is not uh, terminated and uh, it continues. However, the statistical weight is increased by the factor of d. Right? So we increase the statistical weight by the factor of d. So, uh, for instance, when d equals 2, then 1 over d is 0.5, so that's here. So that means on average every second neutron history is terminated at this point. However, every other second neutron history continues, but its neutron uh, weight is increased by a factor of 2. It's increased twice, right? So every second neutron history is killed and the remaining histories continue with uh, an increased uh, weight by the factor of 2. You can choose a different D number. For instance, we can choose 10. So in this case, 1 over D is 0.1. So that means that 9 out of 10 neutron histories will be killed at this point when the neutron weight is dropping below the uh, weight limit and uh, 1 out of 10 neutron histories will continue with uh, its neutron weight increased 10 times. And this is just a summary slide for the Russian roulette rule. So every time the neutron weight falls below the uh, weight limit uh, a new random number which I denote by you here is generated from the interval 0, 1. The number is compared to the value 1 over d, where you are free to choose the d value from the interval 2 to 10. This is the recommended interval. 
If the random number is bigger than 1 over d, then the natural history is terminated. If it's smaller or equal, then the neutron weight is increased by the factor v and the neutron history continues. And that's all for now. Have a nice day.